Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to my channel. I pray that you are all in the best of health and iman. If you are new, welcome. My name is Nafisa. I am a Muslim life coach and I support Muslim women with relationship and mental health issues. So if you're interested in being coached in those areas, you can find me over on my website, which I will leave linked in the description box down below. But over here on YouTube, I make Islamic lifestyle as well as dawah content. So if you're interested in that, then definitely make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. So my sisters, today's video, we are talking about toxic masculinity and what that is and what it looks like. Why? So that you sisters can be very much aware because if you're not careful and you end up with men who fall under this category, life, married life may be miserable. And you might actually take that example and think that that's what every marriage is like. But no, there are such things as healthy men. There are such things as good men. There are such men who have learned to get the balance right and they are enjoying their marriages without the craziness of all this mad toxic behavior that is going on out there, especially social media, um, these current days and times. I mean, I like guys, if I give birth to a son, I am worried about the kind of world that I'm going to raise my son in, especially as far as social media is, is um, concerned. But anyways, let's get into it, guys. So what is masculinity? Masculinity is simply just the character traits um, that is generally associated with men. So the general ways that men naturally behave. That is what masculinity is. Just like femininity is just the characters and traits and qualities that women generally possess, right? Like if you were to take a group of women, you will find some common behaviors between them. That's what femininity is. And same with men, masculinity. If you take a group of men, you have certain qualities that is just common between most of them. So that is what we're talking about when we say masculinity. So when we put the word toxic in front of it, you already know the direction that this is going in. So if you guys are wondering what are some of the qualities of toxic masculinity the number one thing to remember is that <sighs> toxic men are men who abuse their power and position we know it doesn't take someone to be that smart to understand that in this life men are generally the leaders right they are the leaders whether we like to admit it or not that's just the way things are and in Islam, Allah gives the men a level of responsibility and leadership over the women and the children. So when you end up with a toxic man, what he does is he abuses that power and that position of leadership. Any man who abuses his power of leadership or the right to lead, and when those specific behaviors tend to repeat themselves and then people begin to share it on social media so other young men who are coming up can become like that, we end up with the phrase that we now have of toxic masculinity, which is a shame that we even have to come up with such things because really what we should be trying to do is raise the next generation to be men who are going to be responsible men who are going to be kind men who will learn great leadership skills in terms of how to manage their homes manage their families protect and provide all these good qualities are the things that we should be inspiring our young men to do unfortunately that's not quite what's happening these days so like i said before one of the main qualities of toxic masculinity is when a man abuses his position of power so this man could be a father he could be a, um, a husband he may be the first son in the family whoever he is if he abuses his position as a leader that is a toxic quality why because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not put men in position for them to abuse their leadership positions in fact I would argue that at times it's a test from Allah for Allah to see how you're going to treat those below you. Guys, if you know the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you know the story of um, Umar and how, you know, what a fighter he was. And 
interestingly, when he became the leaders of the believers after the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had passed away, he became so much more gentle and so much more soft. And that is because of the fear of Allah. And that is what Islam does to your heart, is that it changes your heart. If a man says that he truly fears Allah, sometimes you guys ask me, how do we read between the lines to know when someone really doesn't fear Allah? It's all down to their behaviors, their general behavior. For me, I think the biggest giveaway um, where you can really read a man's character is in how he treats other people and his daily life. Because if a man can quote all this hadith and Quran and his cool, it's nice, but he can't, he doesn't have respect when he you know the way he speaks to people the way he approaches people and he's very rude he's very demanding all of that is i'm, I'm looking at your praying and fasting and quoting hadith and quran i'm looking at that with a side eye because really if you truly fear allah at the end of the day you wonder what am i going to say to allah on the day of judgment if i harm someone else especially the people that i love so when a man is toxic he is all about his position of power and those are the kind of men who are, this is my next point, controlling. Being overly controlling is one of the biggest signs of toxic masculinity. Toxic men are extremely controlling. Oftentimes, actually, they usually will prey on women who don't know any better so that they can get away with their controlling behavior. Controlling in what way? They may be very verbally abusive, maybe physically abusive, they might be emotionally manipulative. A lot of the list on the narcissistic list, if you haven't watched my videos about, you know, the narcissistic Muslim man, a lot of those behaviours are the type of behaviours that toxic men display. And they hate, they absolutely hate to be challenged. As far as they are concerned, they have branded them, themselves as the more, um, s the smarter species. <laughs> this The smarter species... As far as they are concerned, because they've been given that degree and level of responsibility over women and children, they think that it means that they are the, the better um, um, sex, as in your gen your, you know, whether you're male or female, they think they are the better sex and therefore they have a right to overrule everything. They see people who are under them as people that they own. So you are my wife and I own you. You are my child and I own you. And the irony of it all is that they don't own nothing. They don't own nothing. They don't even own themselves. Honestly, like, that's how deep it is. They don't even own themselves because at the end of the day, Allah owns everything and we own nothing. Sometimes when Allah gives us, he gives us health. He gives us wealth. He gives us our youth and, you know, energy. It begins to get to our heads and we actually think we're something. You know, the other day we had a guest over for Eid and we was having a dis discussion about, you know, the type of work that they do. And they work in the care industry and they were talking about some of the things they see when people reach the end of their lives. And, and they were telling us, like, you know, they have seen people like people who've had money, like crazy money, people who've been around the world, seen things you and I could never even imagine. And they are like, if you see the way they end. If you see them, like if someone doesn't change their nappy, they will soil themselves. And that's the end of that person who was arrogant, who was proud. And I am the big I am. You must do what I say. At the end of the day, sisters, if we want peace of mind in our homes, in our marriages, it's very important that you get with a man who has a heart. A heart who can actually care for you. Because one of the... The, the damages that toxic masculinity produces is men who are extremely hard-hearted because men can't cry. How dare you cry? Stop crying is the things we tell boys. Stop crying. Be a man. Whilst men need to have courage, and courage doesn't mean the absence of fear. Courage means doing the right thing despite the fear. And so we shouldn't deter our, our boys from having emotions because this is how they end up being. Men who literally don't feel. And when your heart is, your heart is so hard and you don't feel, 
of course you're going to feel entitled. Of course you're going to control other people. Of course you're going to suffocate your family members all under the guise of, I'm only trying to protect. Because unfortunately, this is what a lot of these toxic men do. On the outside, let's say for example, if a man is choking his wife, not physically, but in such a way, he's not giving her room to breathe. And then they have a third party coming. His response is, I'm only trying to protect my wife. It's a very dangerous place out there. Now, it may actually be a very dangerous place, or maybe you're just paranoid. Because that's also one of the characteristics of toxic masculinity, is men who are extremely jealous, extremely paranoid. We've got to, we'll get to some of these things. And so the people under them just feel like, it's almost like they can't breathe. They're like, they're like, they have to walk on eggshells. And no real healthy man would ever want the people that he loves to ever feel like they have to walk on eggshells under them. If, if your husband makes you feel choked, but at the end of the day, he cares and he loves you. And if you ever tell him that you make me feel, I don't feel free around you, I can't be myself. And he, it actually affects his emotions. Then maybe he's not as toxic as, as you like to think. Because... The real toxic men, they don't care how they make you feel. Like, your feelings is irrelevant. This is one of the biggest things. Your feelings are irrelevant. They will do whatever they're going to do, irregardless of how it makes you feel. And this is what I'm talking about when I say the heart becomes hard. And there is no emotion. And they somehow think this is what a man is supposed to be. A man is supposed to be this rock hard person. Have a, you know, thick voice. And, you know, all of these ideas that we have about what a man is supposed to be. They just take it to the next level. And they think that makes them men. I laugh sometimes when I see some of these young um, men out there these days. They, everyone's growing a, be a beard. And I don't know. It makes them feel more, more masculine. Then that's great. It's a son now to also grow a beard. But it's like there's more to being a man than just growing beards and having a deep voice and telling everybody else what to do and choking everyone with your controlling behavior. I think it, it can be hard for a woman to teach a man how to be a man. Which is why I think it's very important that we have the healthy men actually step up and nurture the younger men in a positive way so they can grow up to, to be positive people, to know how to navigate around manhood correctly so that we don't have the next generation suffering problems that this generation is also suffering from, you know? So controlling is something you should definitely look out for. Toxic men are extremely controlling. The next quality of toxic masculinity is being emotionally unavailable. And again, it goes back to some of the points I was making earlier on about the thing of not crying, not feelings. We know men are not going to feel the way women do. They're just not designed that way. But they are going to have a level of care and a level of mercy. You know, it reminds me of one of the Sahabas saw the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam playing with his grandchild. And he said, you know, you play with your grandchild. I have had my grandchild. I've never kissed or played with them. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, mercy has been snatched from your heart. What can I do for you? Like, what can I do for a man who has no mercy to in his heart? I, I can't help you with that, <laughs> basically. You know, you have no, no mercy in your heart and I can't help you with that. And with us women being such emotional creatures, we need men to try. I know it doesn't, it may not come as natural to them as it does to us. We need men to try to at least show us a bit more emotion, be a little bit more supportive. And therefore, not even caring whatsoever about other people's emotion means that that person themselves may well be emotionally unavailable, which is not good for a relationship. Relationships are give and take. Us women have to learn to be a little bit more reasonable at times. Men have to learn to be a little bit more emotional at times. There's a balance and we have to fight against our nature in some ways to make relationships work. And that's why a lot of the times the relationships fail because us human beings just think we can just stay exactly the way we are. And why isn't it all working out? Because actually you have to bend a bit, he has to bend a bit and that's how you make it go along. That's how it works. If one person's going to be like, no, 
I say so and I'm standing my ground and da -da. the other person's like, you can't tell me what to do. Like, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Men have to learn to be a little bit more flexible in fighting the way they are naturally to some extent when it comes to family and building a home so that it works better. So men are not that emotion, emotional as women are. But you know what? Sometimes you have to show that emotion and that care to your wife and to your children, to your mother and all of that. Because at the end of the day, that will make that person feel loved. And if you're with a partner who doesn't care whether you feel loved or not, I don't know. Do you want to stay with that person for the rest of your life? Because as far as I'm concerned, like, why are they marrying you? Are they just marrying you just so that they can have a stamp of I'm a husband? Or are they actually marrying you to try to create a peaceful and happy home together? Like sometimes we will have to do certain things we don't like or we don't even care for just to make that person feel a little bit more considered and a bit more happier because that's our loved ones and we care for them in that way. You know, so a man who is emotionally unavailable, doesn't care about all these emotion stuff, like you're extremely upset. And I'm not talking about the women who use their emotions to like abuse the situation, but I'm talking about you're not a woman that cries that often. And the day when something really upsets you and you're you're crying your eyes out, the guy's just sitting there looking at you like, like, hello, hello. <laughs> Seriously, like that type of stuff is stuff you want to be really careful about. Because you might find yourself forever trying to get this person to give me a little bit of heart. Like, just give me a bit of heart. I'm always trying to get something out of this person, but it's like nobody's there. You know what they say? The lights are on, but no one's at home. One of those situations. So emotionally unavailable men is a sign that a man has a lot going on deep underneath. And you may not want to associate yourself with this type of a person. The next one is really one I should have said earlier on. And I've again, touched on it a little bit already. And that is aggressiveness. Aggressiveness, when it's utilized um, in the wrong situations, is a sign of toxic masculinity. Why? Because aggression is usually a character trait that we expect to see in men, but that they should use it in ways that's positive. But when you have aggression in a way of, you know, domestic abuse and abusing the children just sometimes not even the physical aggression but sometimes the verbal aggression is the way the words come out it's the way like <sighs> i'm a um a millennial right in my generation i think our parents their parents raised them in such a way especially if you're like from from you know africa their parents raised them in such a way where it's like if your dad is coming home, everyone got scared when dad was coming home. Like everyone got scared when dad was coming home. And then when we think about that, it's like, but why is everyone scared when dad's coming home? Dad is not this big bad monster that you needed to be scared of. You needed to respect him. There's a difference. And I think a lot of men have gotten this difference. I don't even think a lot of them even know the difference. They're like, Maybe to some extent, you need a little bit of fear to respect someone. I can understand that a little bit. But at the same time, if someone truly respects you, they're not just going to avoid certain things only when you're around. Right? It's like, let's think about our relationship with Allah. And with Allah is the best of examples. Allah doesn't need to be right here in our face for us to be like, it's the last time we need to go and pray. Like he told us pray. If you don't, this is what the consequence is going to be when the time comes. But Allah doesn't need to be in our living rooms every day watching us being like, uh, hello, time to pray. No, if you truly love Allah and you fear him the way you say that you do, which is why I say an element of, of fear could be a part of respect, then you would pray anyway. But it's not such a fear that Allah needs to be doing present to doing something to punish you right away before you do that thing. So for men... Them thinking that fear is the only tool that they can use to attain respect is actually a toxic thing in my perspective. I think it's very toxic. I think rather you should gain people's love and their respect and true honor. Because sometimes the way you gain other people's um, respect is when they really have internalized whatever you've taught them 
and they now really believe it as part of their own core belief. Whereas with fear, sometimes you just don't do something because you don't want to be harmed, right? Rather than, I don't want to do these things because I truly respect this person. So if my husband said to me, I don't appreciate when you do that, I'm not going to stop doing that because I'm scared that, oh my gosh, if I don't stop, he's going to divorce me. That might be part of the fear. I'm just giving an example. That might be part of the reason why I don't do that behavior anymore. But if I really respected my husband, if I cared about how he felt, and I wanted my husband to be happy, I would avoid making that decision again because I don't like the sadness. I don't like the unhappy person that I see when I do that behavior. So therefore, I avoid that behavior rather than, oh my God, I'm scared he might do something to me if I, if I stop that. So I think that, so therefore, so essentially what I'm saying here, and that's just a long-winded way of basically saying that men who use aggression as one of their main tools of attaining control are aggressive, are toxic men, period. They are toxic men because when you are the person who is supposed to protect, you should not be the source of violence and harm and hurt to the people you love. It's contrary. It's not making sense. The man is meant to be the protector. So how is the same protector being the one that's harming? Now, some might argue that, well, maybe he's protecting something else. You it's very difficult to protect something by harming it. It's very difficult. So, sisters, be aware. Men who are aggressive are toxic men. And be careful. Do not get yourself caught up. Do not give these people excuses. I know this is what us women love to do. Make a million and one excuse for the men who are aggressive, for the men who hit other, other women and children and people beneath them. We make excuses for them just because we are in love with the idea of love. And trust me, a video is coming with the mistakes women make too. Because sometimes we're just in, in love with the idea of love and we fail to see reality even when reality is literally staring at us in the face. So if he's toxic, he's aggressive, he hits you, he harms you in any way, sis, check out. Just check out. Check out. Allah brought you to this world to serve him. He didn't bring you into this world to get beaten up by somebody else. Please. Physical aggression especially is one of the classic traits of toxic men. The next trait of toxic men is being neglectful of their fatherly duties. I know, I just said it all when I said that point. Men who are neglectful of their fatherly duties. You know what? I sometimes watch some of these videos on social media and I it just triggers me at times, so I avoid watching them. I see men who have the audacity the audacity to come on social media, tell women they need to be X, Y, and Z in order for you to marry them. But bro, you left that woman with the three, four, five of your children and you've never seen your kids for so many years and you think, you now somehow, because you go to the gym and you have money, you think you're high value and you deserve a woman who's never touched a man before. Like, how dare you? Come on, mate. Like, stop that. Stop that. Seriously, like some of these men just literally trigger me because, oh, you know, all these women, they've got baby fathers and I don't want a woman who's been with any man before. I don't want a woman who's had children before. And it's like, wait, so these women, these single mothers that you guys are saying are apparently trash now. You don't want them. Who got them pregnant? Please tell me who got them pregnant because the same man who will say he doesn't want a wife who has been with a man before, he has children somewhere else that he's abandoned, that he's not looking after. And so sisters, what I'm saying here is, is a sign of toxic masculinity. When a man neglects his fatherly duties, he might not want to be with the mother that he, he made the children with, that's his choice. But at the end of the day, it should not make him to neglect his duty as a father. He shouldn't have to neglect his duties as a father because a father is meant to do what? Provide and protect. What's happening these days is the men get women pregnant, then they check out. They don't provide and they don't protect. Of course, you're not going to protect. You're not even there to protect. You haven't seen your children for how many years? How can you protect them? So they don't do any of that. And then they go out into the world and think they deserve the best of women. Come on. 
A man, a healthy and good man, should always make his child, his children, a priority in his life. He should always, he should try his best, try his best to make sure he's there for his children and to make sure that he looks after his children. And especially for a Muslim man, you should have in your heart that one day, what am I going to say when I stand before Allah and Allah asks me about these children, what am I going to say? There are men out there these days, their children might be the reason why they go to hell. Because on the day of judgment, their children might stand before Allah and say, Allah, he wasn't there for us. We were exposed to all these things in life because our father wasn't there for us. And he thought he prayed, he thought he fasted, he thought he was helping saving the world. But he abandoned his children somewhere. And so he may walk to hell. So it's very, very important that if a man already has a history of abandoning women and children, don't think, oh no, they, you know, the, she was a bad woman. That's why he had to leave her. Women tell themselves all the different excuses. And that's why some of us get ourselves into the positions we get ourselves in. A man and a woman can have their differences and their relationships might not work anymore. But you definitely want to make sure that if he has children somewhere else, he's look, looking after his children. Because if he doesn't and you lay with him, you marry him, you lay with him, you have children for him. One day he might abandon you and your children too. You're not that much more special than the woman he abandoned before. Trust me. He's developed a behavior pattern and we must be careful of that. So it is toxic for men to neglect their fatherly duties. And it's partly because the men have, have neglected their fatherly duties. That's part of the problems why now we have so many single mothers. That's part of the problem why now women have become so masculine because they've had to fill in the shoes of being the father. A shoe that's, in my opinion, a little bit impossible because a boy gets to a certain stage in his life where he needs to see other men demonstrate to him what it looks like to be a man. And those are the points that I want to make about what toxic masculinity looks like. I really hope you ladies have enjoyed this video. If you want a part two to this, I can definitely add some more. There are a couple more things actually that I want to touch up on, but this video will be way too long and it's getting to Maghreb time now. So I've got to wrap up my day. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you've enjoyed it, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. Share it with a brother or a sister out there whom you feel could benefit from today's content, inshallah. And I will see you guys in my next video and we will talk in the comment section, inshallah. And by the way, guys, if you haven't seen this video that I made a couple of days ago, make sure you watch that video and I will see you guys over there, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.